Good evening. All of a sudden, it was a heart stopper, this launch of Apollo 12. There was no show of the excitement to come in the way one event routinely followed another during the countdown this morning. The main anticipation was the arrival of the first president of the United States to watch a space launch from the scene. The first thing we saw this morning was the familiar steak and eggs breakfast for the crew. Mission Commander Pete Conrad, rookie astronaut Alan Beam, and Richard Gordon, the stay-behind fellow who will circle the moon while the other two land on its surface. And here they are, the astronauts, as they have reached the white room level, walk across that uh, catwalk from the elevator uh, to the white room itself. First man in uh, will be the commander, Pete Conrad. And rather, uh, I gather you're there at the Kennedy Space Center, there at helicopter side. That's correct, uh, Walter, and it's pretty drippy out here at the moment. It's been raining for about the past 15 minutes. Uh, everyone who has one has his umbrella out, uh, has his raincoat on. As you see, the president has his raincoat on. Mrs. Nixon uh, is raincoatless, although a Secret Service man is opening up an umbrella now for both Mrs. Nixon and Trisha Nixon as they step off the helicopter. Coinciding with the president's arrival, a rainstorm swept the area, bringing the worst weather ever for a launch. But the decision was go, and shortly uh, we'll watch the launch as Wally Shira and I described it. Just after the Saturn Apollo disappeared into that low cloud cover, lightning struck near the spacecraft, although exactly how close is still being debated. You'll see and uh, hear Conrad, that is, say a few seconds later that he has lost his inertial platform and the spacecraft power system has cut out. Ten, nine, eight, ignition sequence start, six, Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running, commit liftoff. We have liftoff, 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pete Conrad reports that your program is in. Tower clear. We have got you the roll program, and this baby is really going. Okay, we just lost the platform, gang. I don't know what happened here. We had everything in the world drop out. Roger. Plus one. Fuel cell lights and AC bus light. Fuel cell disconnect. AC bus overload one and two. Main bus A and B out. At a news conference after launch, astronaut Tom Stafford described the emergency procedures taken by the spacecraft crew. At the time when they lost... Uh, the three fuel cells and the two AC buses uh, in the spacecraft, a lot of lights come on and the warning uh, sounds go off. I think Pete Conrad uh, and the whole crew should be really commended for keeping a cool head there and uh, reacting just like they should since the, uh, our own uh, instrument unit went out and started to spin on him. However, he was looking at the rate gyros as the backup instrument, made his own analysis real fast and said, let's press right on. Uh, at that time, then uh, Al Bean was able to reset the fuel cells, and uh, by the t actually by the time that uh, they got past staging, they had the AC buses back on the line working one, two, three, four. I think this also brings out the point that when everything uh, just went boom like that suddenly as far as the loss of power and all the other indications uh, is an example of why we have experienced test pilots flying these vehicles. President Nixon watched the launch outside in the rain. Sometime later, when everyone had caught his breath again, the president visited launch control. America, the United States, is first in space. We're proud to be first in space. We don't say that in any jingoistic way. We say it because as Americans, uh, we want to give uh, the people of this country, and particularly our young people, the feeling that there here is an area that we can concentrate for a positive goal. Concentrate and be proud of being Americans. Be proud of what we have accomplished, not only for ourselves, but for future generations and for the whole world. Well, all's calm now. The spacecraft has left Earth orbit and is on its way to the moon. Well, Houston, Chris says he doesn't think you guys are the same age as when you got up this morning either. He is absolutely correct. In fact, I wish you guys play us that DSE tape back tonight. <laughs> All LP kept saying was, there's power on the buses, there's power on the buses.
was. In every light, the right-hand side was lit. I kept thinking, why is he saying that to me? Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I say, how are so many lights on? I can't read them all to you. The Samorta Ground Guide, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center. The flight continues smoothly, but the astronauts scheduled an early special check of the lunar landing craft to make sure it wasn't damaged in the shakeup on liftoff. An expensive but welcome luxury in a land of austerity. Frank? They're on their way to the moon, the three astronauts of Apollo 12, Pete Conrad, Richard Gordon, and Alan Bean. President Nixon was there to watch the launch this morning at Cape Kennedy. Despite bad weather, Apollo 12 got off the launch pad exactly on time, but the mission was not without its moments of anxiety. ABC science editor Jules Bergman has the story from Cape Kennedy. The weather forecast here at the Cape called for occasional showers. Well, there were showers all right, heavy rain in fact, more than just occasional showers. And along with thousands of others, the president got a little damp as he arrived at a special viewing area after his flight from Washington. But the weather did little to dampen the excitement as the moment of liftoff drew near. You have guidance internal. Ten, nine, eight, ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running, commit. Lift off. We have your word off 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Lift off, the clock's running. I got a yaw program. Roger, clear the tower. I got a pitch and a roll program, and this baby is really gone. Roger, Pete. That's a lovely liftoff. That's not bad at all. Roll's complete. Roger, Pete. The awesome thundering of the Saturn V's engines was still reverberating throughout the entire spaceport when something went wrong. The Saturn V was hidden in the rainstorm covering the Cape when 35 seconds after liftoff, Pete Conrad reported trouble. Okay, we just lost the platform, gang. I don't know what happened here. We had everything in the world drop out. Roger. Okay, now we'll straighten out our problems here. I don't know what happened. Uh, I'm not sure if you get hit by lightning. But the engines kept going and the flight path was beautiful. Conrad, Gordon, and Bean kept their cool and got all the systems working again. And in early afternoon performed the critical engine burn heading themselves toward the moon. One thing for sure, it'll be a long time before another spacecraft is ever launched in a rainstorm. As soon as Apollo 12 was safely in orbit, the president made a brief tour of the Kennedy Space Center. At one point, he addressed several hundred officials and engineers assembled in the Launch Control Center. We are going forward. America, the United States, is first in space. We're proud to be first in space. We don't say that in any jingoistic way. We say it because as Americans, uh, we want to give uh, the people of this country, and particularly our young people, the feeling that they're here is an area that we can concentrate for a positive goal. Concentrate and be proud of being Americans. Be proud of what we have accomplished, not only for ourselves, but for future generations and for the whole world. And in that vein, I simply want to say, I'm proud of those three men up there. I talked to them on the phone before they left. And I'm just as proud of everybody in this room and of the thousands across this country that made it possible. Later in the day, Apollo 12 gave us our first onboard television transmission. Here's part of it. Hey, Jerry, it's a fantastic sight. Uh, the Mississippi Valley has a uh, little bit of cloud coverage coming down from Canada, and there's some in the no uh, northeast part of the country. Uh, up in the New England states, looks like there may be getting some snow here in the next day or two. The next major scheduled event is a critical engine burn tomorrow, a maneuver that gives them a better view of their lunar landing site, but deprives them of safely swinging around the moon automatically should the engines fail. Also scheduled tomorrow, another television transmission. And so, despite a slightly harrowing start, Pete Conrad, Al Bean, and Dick Gordon are safely on their way to the moon tonight. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News at Cape Kennedy.